Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's about 7.10 on this Tuesday evening. I'm heading out to meet a buddy. I wanted to put together a little video on just some uh, basic things to avoid, issues that may come up. Over here in Thailand, I'm staring across the street at the 7-Eleven. So one of the, one of the first things I'll say is, is don't use these ATM machines. There's a Bangkok Bank ATM where that, the guy's standing in front of. That's my bank. And sure, it's super convenient just to hit that branch. But what I do, and I don't like carrying my card around, but I will when I need to get cash a couple of times a month. And, and for the most part, I put as much as I can on my U.S. credit card. But hit the Bangkok bank or whatever your branch is. Hit the ATM machine in front of an open bank during the day. In the rare, rare case, something happens, you don't get 25,000 baht, they're, you're missing a bill, whatever the case is, yeah, do it during business hours, not at a 7-Eleven where it's going to be an issue. The other thing you need to look out for on these ATM machines, you put your card in, hit your ATM, set it to English, take your money, and then your card comes last. So do not forget to take your card. In many parts of the world, including the U.S., it'll give you your card, then hand you the money. That's not the case at uh, most of these machines over here. I ran into that issue years ago, 15 years ago in Hong Kong. Like a dummy, I was tired, long flight, got some money out at customs, and sure enough, left my uh, card in the machine in between customs and immigration. So that's not a great spot to try to retrieve your card. And as I walk by the motorbike stand here in front of my condo, another common mistake, it's not that big a deal, but you don't want to ask these guys to take you anywhere other than up and down the street. This is halfway up Sukhumvit Soy 26. The going rate is 10 baht from here to Sukhumvit or 10 baht in the other direction to Rama 4. If you're at Rama 4 and you want to go all the way to Sukhumvit, well, it's 20 baht. I won't say that always holds true nine out of ten times i'll just give these guys 20 baht just to take me halfway up the street it's kind of the uh frong tax i mean 10 baht's not going to make or break my budget and it might help his bottom line a little but the tie price is definitely 10 baht what you do not want to do is say oh how nice and convenient a, a motor taxi stand right in front of my condo you don't really want to ask these guys, um, you know, how much to take me down to Terminal 21 or whatever the case is. I'll see people arguing, not so much here, but these stands are every, everywhere on all the large uh, streets. I'll see pe people arguing, you know, that's way too much money. These guys are going to throw out a price like 100 baht or 200 baht just, just to see what you're going to pay. And the real price from here to Terminal 21 with the Grab or Bolt app, it's probably either 37 baht or 47. So put those ride-sharing apps on your phone and don't really rely on these uh, motor taxi stands unless you're at the BTS and you just want to shoot straight up Soy 24 or whatever the case is, not make that long walk. 20 baht will be the price. Another issue, maybe for first-time visitors or whatever, you think you're coming over to Thailand, it's hot, man, it is hot, but many people think they're going to wear flip-flops, shower shoes, whatever you want to call them, all day and all night. It's not really the case. I mean, I did bring three good pair of uh, reefs over with me, and I wear them. But walking around Bangkok is a bit of a minefield with uneven pavers. They use these uh, tiles instead of laying sidewalk. I know the light's kind of low, but as the earth kind of shifts around, this really isn't that bad. This is pretty smooth. It can be a, a bit of a minefield and it's a, a real easy way to break a toe walking around in flip-flops all day. We all like to use the different food delivery ops. Grab is my favorite. There's Food Panda and a couple others. Be careful. You'll store your locations of delivery. Call it home or whatever the, whatever the issue is. But I've been burned a couple of times. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Let's say you're getting off the BTS up at Prom Pong. You clearly press the button, deliver from whatever burger place to home, and for whatever reason, it will say, roger that, and then it pins the location where you're ordering the food. 
And sure enough, 20 minutes later, you get a call from uh, the delivery driver or a text saying, I'm here at the BTS Prom Pong, you know, where are you? And you have to send a message saying, I'll give you 40 baht, man, bring it three blocks in the other direction to my condo, and they normally will. But just keep in mind, you think you're gonna save time, you know, order food and, and hopefully it'll be ready by the time you get back to your condo. And oftentimes you're sending that food to uh, wherever you're standing when you ordered it. Now that doesn't happen all the time. I'm not sure if uh, you plug in home and then it automatically switches when you're standing one mile from home. And maybe I haven't noticed because I have been able to deliver food on the way home and, and it's waiting for me the 20 minutes later when I get home. Just keep, keep in mind, take a look at the app, make sure it's not uh, changing locations on you. There's probably a setting in the app that says something along the lines of uh, allow a precise location, you know, say yes or no, and I'm sure I, I put yes, but that might uh, trip you up at times. Now looking across the way to the bright lights of the 26 massage, here's a little tip on massage places. And I'm gonna turn the camera over here. I, I try not to be rude to uh, young ladies sitting out in front of uh, different establishments. How do I put it delicately? If, if there are people in, uh, young ladies in short dresses and all, standing out in front of, of the massage place, they're not as interested in uh, you walking in and, and saying, yeah, I really need uh, some work. The, the back is super tight. You know, give me a nice sports massage or whatever. They're, they're probably going to look at you with a, with a blank stare. You want uh, what kind of massage? If you're looking for a legitimate massage, and I'm trying to find one on the street here, it's going to be you walk in and there's a person behind the counter. You tell them what kind of massage you want. You don't pick your masseuse and you go from there. This is just a common sense tip. When you're walking down the sidewalk and you see a puddle like this, this is a pretty clear drop. But it, it's not raining and you see that uh, you see that wetness, you don't walk under that. Like she just walked off to the right, that's that's a dripping air conditioner. That's some, that's some nasty water to drop on your face. And it kind of goes without saying, if you're gonna run across the street anywhere in Bangkok, you better look both ways twice because bikes will come out of nowhere I'm looking at a bike right here on the correct side of the street. So it's stand to reason, okay, it's all clear. I'm gonna step out and wham, I get nailed from behind. Somebody taking a, a little shortcut on the wrong side. And the trains are a great way to get around town, but there's a little bit of uh, train etiquette. Look at the arrows on the ground. Don't be standing right in the middle. When these gates open, you're standing right there. You're probably gonna get knocked over by a, a tie looking straight at their phone. The other issue is take that large backpack off, even medium size, like, like this guy straight ahead. You don't really want to get on the train and these trains are packed. You're kind of banging around into people with that backpack. What you'll see ties do is uh, take it off and put it on their chest. I just take mine off and, and hold it. It's not that big a deal for the uh, five minute ride. And if you're a little intimidated by the train system, I mean, it, it's very, very simple. It's, it's not exactly Tokyo and some of the busiest train stations, if not the busiest in the world. That is super intimidating. It, that's not complicated either, but this is a very easy train system to learn. I've, uh, I've, I've talked with people over the years that have been here three, four times, and they're still taking taxis everywhere, and that's just a pain. At, right now, I'm just going to two train stops. I'm guessing a 20, 25 minute taxi ride and I'll be there in uh, five minutes on the train. And, and getting back to the arrow, see this is the way to go. There's a person standing on either side. Now this is a little weird, but you'll notice there are two arrows. During busy, busy peak times, you'll be the first person or second person, like this gentleman, standing up at the top, and there'll be 10 people in line. All of a sudden, people will start rushing over and making a second line. Totally acceptable. Don't let it put you off. The worst, worst thing that's going to happen is a packed train is gonna pull up and uh, you have to wait for the next train, which is also gonna be packed. So just do your best to, to squeeze in there. It's kind of uh, acceptable here in, in Bangkok to not be pushy, but you're definitely uh, trying to stay out of people's way as they're getting onto the train and, and 
don't be surprised if people are brushing up alongside you. That's just part of the deal. And that train was packed, so that brings up another tip. The gentleman standing there in the white shirt, that's right where I was standing on, on my train. So you have to step out to allow people to get off the train. It's just basic common sense. People that are getting on, they're not gonna steal your spot. Just step out, let people off, step back in, and then those waiting to board the train will, will go on after you. It's just common courtesy. You have to understand these trains are heavily used. I mean, that is not even a packed train. I, I've seen people packed in there like sardines. And you'll hear different people online saying, oh, the train system, it's so rude. I can't believe they were pushing around and all. It's nothing like the train back home in Portland, Oregon or San Diego. Well, I've been on those trains in Portland and, and, and you can't compare a Portland, Oregon train and a Bangkok train. You just can't. It's night and day. There are just 16 million people in this vicinity and probably half of them use these trains every day. And here comes the next one. You can see uh, during peak hours, I think it's every three minutes. That was about every one minute. So don't sweat it. If the doors open and they're just packed in like sardines, just wait for the next train. But you're gonna be waiting 10 or 15 minutes until you find a nice empty train. Like this gentleman, he just stepped out of the way, let people off, and that's not even a, a busy train. And I've mentioned it in a couple of other videos, but it, uh, it's worth repeating. These ticket offices, 8 o'clock at night, that's the time to come get your rabbit card, bring a nice color copy of your passport. And right here, he's going through this guy's backpack. To be quite honest, I just walked by him. I, I don't know if he waves people over. See, there's diff different people coming in with bags and they're kind of just walking by them. But don't be surprised if they want to uh, wave that wand over your backpack or whatever the, whatever the case is. There are security guards. But getting back to the uh, color copy of the passport, I'm not a big fan on, on walking around carrying my passport, especially in a rainy climate. But have that nice color copy. Areas or, or things like this BTS, they're not going to care. They're just young people. They just need your identification. They don't really care if it's a if it's a copy. If you're heading to immigration, absolutely bring the original passport. And I'm meeting my buddy over here at PJ O'Brien's across the street from the W District. Yeah, and don't don't get too carried away with uh, worrying about making mistakes and and overthinking things. These are just things you're going to pick up the first time i'm just throwing them out there it more you need to just approach moving to thailand and especially uh bangkok it's not the uk or the us australia things operate their own way here and i'm not supposed to try to change those things or think they're going to operate how they how they did in uh, san diego that's just not going to happen so i'm i'm throwing out there's some things that might catch you off guard. I've, I've, I've used that term in other videos, but some people are more caught off guard by others, and it really disturbs them. And can you believe ties do this and do that? And you just need to lighten up. I mean, I'm sure some of those folks are, are maybe a little uptight wherever they came from, and they're going to be uptight when they get here to Bangkok. I mean, it, it, it's just things are different. So just roll with the flow and you will be fine. And when I'm hanging out in the pub, I'll go ahead and throw this little uh, pub tip out. If you're a, a decent person, a, a good customer, if happy hour ends at 7 p.m., and not to be a cheapskate, I mean, leave a nice little tip. But right before happy hour ends and you're going to hang out for another two or three rounds, go ahead and order them before happy hour. Most of these places, it, it's kind of the unofficial rule. Yeah, we'll give you the happy hour price and hang out till 9 p.m. Two hours later, we don't care. But it might be nice to leave that 100 baht tip, a whole $2.80 U.S. cents. I know we can get into a big do you need to tip or not in, in Bangkok debate, but it means a lot to a lot of these servers that, believe it or not, might be making less than 500 U.S. dollars a month in, in many cases. And hanging out in, uh, I'll call it a foreign bar or an expat bar, like this Irish bar, P.J. O'Brien's, 
I'm not saying they expect a tip, but probably more people leave a, leave a small tip than do not. So it's not, they don't tip in Thailand. Agreed. Most Thai people, if the bill is uh, 490 baht, well, they'll leave 500 baht. And, and I'm not saying you have to leave 200 baht on a, a 800 baht bill, but 50 baht or 100 baht once in a while, that'd be uh, greatly appreciated. Once again, of course, that's up to you. Max is here tonight, a really nice guy. I believe he's the manager of uh, the Royal Oak, and I, I don't know, some, the assistant manager of O'Shea's? I'm not sure. Royal Oak, O'Shea's, this place, P.J. O'Brien's shenanigans up near the Pat Pong red light area. It's all the same owner, and so I think he works all the different bars. Uh, normally, I see him at the Royal Oak, but he's here tonight. And I think this is uh, kind of a big night. The uh, I'm here for my buddy uh, Rishi's stand-up comedy open mic. If you want to check it out, it's called The Level Up. I'm looking at a poster. P.J. O'Brien's, Tuesday evenings, 8 p.m. There is a, a 400 baht entry fee. I think it's 300 baht if you get the tickets ahead of time. Yeah, you know, no big deal. Supporting the arts. So we're upstairs hanging out at uh, P.J. O'Brien's. I'm going to film Rishi's stand-up set on his phone. Just hanging out. Tonight is a uh, Sprite night. I'm trying to be cool. And this is nice. I wanted to get out of here. We got about a foot of water on the ground, but supposedly my car has arrived. And in somewhat Bangkok fashion, there's no car to be seen. So I'm just waiting to get canceled. It shows he's in the area. I'm wondering if that's him across the street. I see somebody moving. I put three times I'm at P.J. O'Brien's pub. Or who knows where the guy is? Little Bangkok rain shower. So I'm in my grab. It's uh, really coming down. 95 baht to go about three train stops back home. If... I were to try to flag a cab down in a rainstorm like this, 99% of the cabs will have a broken meter. So just kind of expect that. And they're probably gonna want three or 400 baht. So wait till the rain finishes or don't complain about that surcharge. Your best bet will be to try to get a grab or bolt car. And this is a private car, many of the taxis that do that service on the side forget it they're they're not going to come luckily there was just a little miscommunication on my pickup point otherwise he showed up in about 10 minutes it's not uncommon it, it's not late I, I don't know what time it is it's not midnight but but with a rainstorm it's not uncommon to get a car that's going to take 20 or 30 minutes to arrive because they allow them to stack up and it will say finishing a ride sometimes finishing two rides and then i'll come pick you up i'm in the general area so just use these apps have a little patience during the rainy season yeah it's a little bit of a struggle to get around town and stay dry but it's really not that big a deal so thank you so much for following along this little run around bangkok tonight plenty more videos to come consider subscribing if you haven't and i will see you very very soon Take it easy.